Hello everyone, I'm Cool Guy. welcome back. Today I have a Warlock PvE build to talk about. I call it the Chaotic Necrotic. It's when things get crazy, when things get difficult. It's really, really good and I can't wait for you to try it out. I'm in the middle of doing a full review of the new Beyond Light Exotic Gauntlets for the Warlock Necrotic Grips. And real talk, it just might be a top 5 exotic in the game overall. There's a lot to cover in that review, but I'm going to be stopping right now because this right here deserves its own video. This right here might be the best survivability in Destiny 2. There's a lot of moving parts that play off of each other. There's a couple ways to set it up. I'm going to go through those ways. You can decide what you like. And there's also a third. It's kind of more of a hardcore build. And you'll see what I'm talking about. The Necrotic Grip's exotic perk, Grasp of the Devourer, states, Damaging combatants with melee attacks corrupts them with increasing damage over time. Defeating a corrupted combatant spreads the corrupting effect to nearby targets and restores melee energy. It's S-tier add control and all around just good extra damage booster. Get one melee kill and it can spread and spread and spread. It'll clear out in an entire section. It's very satisfying watching it all happen. It's worth noting, it also works perfectly with Thorn. You don't have to use Thorn with the build I'm about to talk about, but it actually isn't bad at all. Thorn makes these gauntlets work at a distance, and that alone is worth a look. Thorn's exotic perk, Mark of the Devourer. Rounds pierce targets and deal damage over time, kills with this weapon leave behind remnants. And the other exotic perk is Soul Devourer. Absorbing the remnants, strengthens Mark of Devourer, and partially refills the magazine. So far, we have Mark of the Devourer, Soul Devourer, and Grasp of the Devourer. But you know what's the final piece of that puzzle? Devour. Bottom Tree Voidwalker, Attunement of Hunger. There's amazing synergy out of the gate, and a real quick rundown of this skill tree, and then we can start to mod everything out. Things get really crazy. First, we have Feed the Void. Hold the grenade button, consume your grenade to regenerate health, and it grants the Devour effect. Devour. This is the melee, so kills with this melee ability fully regenerate your health. For a short time afterward, kills restore additional health. Insatiable. With Devour active, killing enemies extends its duration and recharges your grenade. Then we have the Vortex Nova Bomb. So first thing, the amazing thing, with these gauntlets, after you have Devour active, all the kills that the spreading poison gets, each one will proc Devour and gives you health and it resets the timer. So out of the gate, you're a walking survivability machine. But here's how to go further than that, and it's very cool with how everything plays off of each other. The first mod on a Void Armor piece is going to be Charge Harvester. While you're not charged with light, any kill or assist has a small cumulative chance to cause you to become charged with light. You're going to find out that this works a ton because all those kills that the poison's getting from spreading is going to be getting this perk to proc. You get that poison going in a group of adds, as it spreads, it's going to proc. It passively, yet quickly, gets you charged with light. Next is something I haven't seen too many people talking about, and a lot of people might have just glossed it over. It's from the Artifact. In the last column, it only costs two energy, Abyssal Charge. Become charged with light by defeating combatants with void melee abilities. Perfect for Voidwalker. It's as simple as that. Kill an enemy with a charged melee, you become charged with light. Next, we have an arc piece, Heavy Handed. While charged with light, regain half of your melee energy when you use a charged melee ability, consuming one stack of charge with light. When you add on another arc mod, you get the second part. While surrounded by multiple combatants, defeating them with a fusion shotgun, sidearm, or SMG is going to add ammo for that weapon from your reserves, and I'll get to that in a moment. But so far, check out this interaction. I have a full melee charge and I'm charged with light. I melee final blow an enemy. When that happens, the charge of light is consumed and my melee cooldown gets filled halfway. That's because of heavy handed. But because of the artifact perk, since I got a void melee final blow, it gives that charge of light right back. And not to mention, again, Charge Harvester is just going to be giving that charge if you don't have a full melee. Next, we have Taking Charge. Become charged with light by picking up orbs of power. Now, say you have a masterwork weapon or you're playing with a fire team. This entire build is about getting a charge with light, it going away and coming back and going away. But this one right here can be changed for other mods, and we'll talk about that later on in the video. But finally, one of the most important ones to make all this work is on Void, Protective Light. While charged with light, you gain significant damage resistance against combatants when your shields are destroyed. This effect consumes all stacks of charge with light, and the more stacks consumed, the longer the damage resistance lasts. When you tie all of this together, this single charge of light is being consumed, redirected, and procced consistently. All of these mods and the Devour Tree work perfectly together. It all starts with a melee. 
when this happens, you become charged with light. The adds around you are going to die to the poison damage from the gloves. And keep in mind, a part of this gauntlet's exotic perk is that defeating a corrupted combatant spreads that corrupting effect to the nearby targets and it restores melee energy. You get the melee kill, you get charged with light, devour is procced as you're moving, you're getting kills with your weapons, and the poison's getting kills, so charge harvester is going to get you charged again. And this is right where you want to be. Devour in full effect. Each time the poison is getting kills, you're getting health, the timer's resetting, but there are times when things get chaotic, and when this happens, that's where protective light comes into play. The charge gets consumed, and a timer goes on your screen, and that can keep you alive. This right here is a moment for you as it's happening. That's when you can consume your grenade. That's going to give you full health, and that can just make sure that you stay alive. You can get to cover, and as your poison's spreading, maybe it'll get a kill and devour or proc and give you health that way. But the grenade consumption is almost like a last-ditch effort. But the great part about it is that when you do consume that grenade because of the perks on the tree, you're going to get that grenade back in no time with all the kills that are going on from your weapons and from that poison spreading. All the while, you still have maximum upkeep for Devour. When the charge of melee is back, melee an enemy, you probably already have Devour still going, but you use it to get the charge with light back. And that's always going to be there. You always want that banked. That way you have protective light if you need it. And most of the time, Charge Harvester is just going to have it back already. Obviously, in this clip, I'm throwing caution to the wind. You wouldn't necessarily do that, but in case you are in the middle, with all the chaos going on, if you are using heavy-handed, ammo for that shotgun, SMG, sidearm, is being added to your reserves as you're getting kills. And with this build, there's also a play to put in and add stacks on stacks. You replace taking charge or heavy handed. It would probably be taking charge. And I don't have stacks on stacks, unfortunately, but it would work well. But this last one's more so for the hardcore. You would keep everything the same. We have charge harvester, abyssal charge, heavy handed, protective light. But replace that taking charge with global reach, more mind cells. You can damage targets at a greater distance. You pair that with the Icolos SMG, and also it's good because of anti-barrier rounds. It's an SMG. Mine here has Threat Detector and Surrounded, and since it is an SMG, Heavy Hand is going to give it ammo right in the reserves as you're in the thick of things. But what you have now with this is that Melee to get charged with Light, Charge Harvester giving you a charge passively, and when you're low health, Protective Light keeps you alive a tad bit longer. That way you can consume the grenade, maybe wait for the poison spread to get a kill, or maybe you can just go in for cover. And with this, you're going to be mowing down the adds. Pretty much all of them, if they're grouped up, are going to be corrupted by the poison, so it's just going to continually spread. But you're going to be creating one of the best additions to a build, a war mine cell that has global reach. It's a very complete build at base. I mean, you can try different setups, maybe charge with light that has a deal with weapons or other factors, but Devour being able to just keep on procking to keep you alive from the spread of this poison is very strong. The pairing with Protective Light is amazing. Charge Harvester, again, is amazing. Even in higher level activities, because if you can just melee an add, that's going to get you a charge and you can have that bank. So if you're ever in low health, protective light can kick in, that can save you. Not to mention all the kills that you're getting in between to keep devour up. You're a tank and I think this could do well in just about anywhere. So put it together, tell me what you think. Thorn is fun. It's not necessary though. Let me know what you come up with. If you're new here, remember to hit the subscribe button. And if you are subscribed, thank you so much for your support. If you're looking for a new controller, I am partnered with Scuff Gaming. There's a link down below and use my code COOL at checkout for a discount. Let's talk about this chaotic necrotic build down in the comments section below. Thank you for watching and until the next one, I am Cool Guy.